I feel like a schoolboy again. <laughs> oh, ow. She likes it sloppy. No, I don't. Maybe next time a little bit more cream, huh? But yeah, great stuff. You want to make out? Wow! Oh, there's nothing I love more than slurping up some bird bones. I like the hot dog, but with some jelly. Wow! Bitcoin actually broke the six-year structural line that we talked about in yesterday's clip. Roll it. This would be my ultimate case. Maybe we got to pump up to over the next few days, pump up to like 9,000, came back down, tested this for support and continued guys. That is ultimate bull mode scenario. Absolute bar none, hands down without a doubt, the craziest scenario that we could be seeing. While we may be seeing a short term pullback after yesterday's massive rally, Overall, this bullish momentum is absolutely insane. Coming within $500 of actually testing the three year long top of the symmetrical triangle of this entire market. A correction to the downside would make the most sense at this point when it pumps, it dumps, and when it dumps, it pumps. But looking forward a week, a month, guys, this is absolutely the most bullish scenario that we could have seen. And guys, this is huge. The best article I found on Cointelegraph here, three factors why Bitcoin price exploded over 9.4 overnight. But what's more important is that there's so much evidence this was completely organic and in fact, pretty much the best case scenario of how a breakout could have played out for Bitcoin. Wow. Oh, let's get crunching. Wow what's going on everyone welcome back to an extremely exciting episode of bitcoin guys without a doubt yesterday was one of the craziest days for bitcoin that i've ever seen uh well deserved uh, it was a great day yesterday absolutely wonderful i'm glad everyone was a part of it uh but we do have a lot of news to get into and a lot of bitcoin information guys because there's some more information coming out specifically about yesterday some exchanges such as coinbase went down because there was potentially a huge i mean it's pretty much confirmed a huge influx of organic uh, interest in Bitcoin. Okay, they really need to get that fixed, but completely bananas, guys. So much to get into. And as well, we did uh, select the winner for the giveaway yesterday, but we actually sent her Bitcoin. So guys, we're still actually going to give this one away and we'll do it in this video. So because I still have two left, because I sent her Bitcoin instead, make sure to drop a comment below and we'll give this one away in the next video. Hit the likes, hit the comments, hit the dings. Whoa, let's get into it, guys. So this is, I mean, this completely surpassed my expectations. When I made the video yesterday, we hadn't even broken above this line just yet. And things, I mean, every single, every few hours, the price was pumping more and more. It just got absolutely crazy. So the biggest thing I think that happened yesterday, because I think a lot of people are struggling to put it into a perspective of like, wow, what's going on? So it is kind of a struggle because we broke uh, pretty much the hardest resistance seemingly on the chart around that 8K level. Uh, down around this level here, we just completely shot through it. We actually traded there for a few daily candles. You see about, I mean, it was wicking up here all the way back to April 23rd, and now it's exactly a week later, uh, and we did break through that, okay? We also broke through, completely shattered. We shattered the 200-day moving average, this purple line here, guys. Absolutely insane. I mean, this candle is completely nuts. I mean, look at this. Look on this chart. Where do you see a candle this size, okay? In the last... In the last five months, you don't see it anywhere. Definitely one of the biggest daily candles in Bitcoin's history here. Now, again, I want to preface this by saying we just had a massive pump. So I think for the most part, most people understand that we're probably not going to get another 15, 20% candle for Bitcoin today, guys. Uh, basically, in these types of situations, what we want to look for is some small consolidation, just not a massive drop. Say, for example, we did this. This would probably not be the best case scenario. But I do think, I do think that it is possible if because there's two scenarios. There's a scenario where we cool down for a few days and then continue this massive pump with the halving coming up in less than two weeks. The excitement is there, the excitement is building, and I could actually see that happening. But what I think is more realistic, if anything, uh, I do think that it is likely that we could have to come back and test some of these key levels. For example, the 200 day moving average, and this wouldn't be today, this would be over a few days, if anything. But most importantly, maybe even more tests along this line, like the 85, this would be very bullish. But again, even if we broke this line again and then continued up, that wouldn't be that bad. We don't have to bounce exactly on this line. But overall, we wanna, I personally think we should be kind of moving along this momentum as we go forward. And as well, guys, I mean, that area on the, on the daily, the 200 daily, here we have the 21 weekly, still at the exact same area. So we completely smashed through that. So that's going to be absolutely key. Again, if we get downside, I completely expect support here, which is right around the $8,079 level. But this is actually really cool. So I think I saw this um, mentioned earlier this morning. Um, six consecutive green weekly candles and then a massive breakout after shattering the 21 week. Okay. Now we have six consecutive daily candles 
and a massive breakout after shattering the 21 week. So it is also likely that we actually just continue up similar to this guys. When we break the 21 week, that momentum went strong. This was actually crazy because it was going into the Litecoin having back here. Now we have the Bitcoin having. So very similar circumstances, very odd with moving averages, pretty identical on the weekly. Uh, even the candlesticks are absolutely crazy on the weekly, how similar they are. Uh, the momentum is nuts and they're both after extremely big drops. Granted, both drops were, one was for a technical reason and one was for kind of a global uh, catastrophe, but still very identical on the charts here. So while I do think it would make more sense that we come, we pull back over the next few days, um, I honestly would not be shocked at all if this, if this bad boy absolutely continued pumping into the having guys. This is the having line right here roughly where it is on the weekly chart. And you can see we're literally right beside it. So the time is now Bitcoin is absolutely in crunch mode. And clearly guys, we are facing a little bit of rejection here. We went all the way up to about 9.4, 9.5 on some exchanges. So absolutely nuts. So um, overall, um, I would actually prefer to see some consolidation here. And guys, let's look at it this way. If we consolidate today and tomorrow, and maybe we get a dump into the weekend, that's not even a bad thing because we would have a gap to the upside um, following coming to the next week. So that could be pretty bullish. I hate gaps to the downside. That's what I don't like. But gaps to the upside aren't bad because they indicate, oh, well, maybe the price has to go back up, which, you know what's crazy enough, is on this chart, the gap here, literally, Bitcoin went absolutely nuts. Uh, when I made the video, I think the price was like right around here. Nobody, I mean, a lot of people were thinking, yeah, I mean, we're definitely not going to fill that gap all the way up here. Guys, not only do we pass it, we shattered it by like $400. So we completely filled this gap, which is absolutely nuts. So again, the rumor of a gap, I know a lot of people don't like it. I'm still kind of on the fence about it, but yet again, here's more evidence that uh, that the gap absolutely just got crushed. Now I wanna spend some time here, guys. Joseph Young, one of my favorite contributors here, published on Cointelegraph this, three key factors. Okay, this is a beefy, beefy article, and I have a lot of things I highlighted in here that I really wanna share of why the price exploded. So in crypto, a spot exchange refers to a platform that facilitates crypto, uh, fiat to crypto trades such as Binance, Coinbase. For instance, they can trade Bitcoin with USD or stable coins like USDT without leverage. Okay, but as you guys know, Coinbase absolutely crashed uh, yesterday. It was a big thing. A lot of people were having trouble getting into it here. Volumes coming from spot exchanges are not inflated by leverage or borrowed capital, such as Bybit, what I talked about earlier in the video, but you don't have to use the leverage here. Uh, but spot volumes typically demonstrate authentic retail demand and they often increase during an accumulation phase, which could give more credence to that idea that we are completely about to be ready to go absolutely moonshot, similar to the past two halvings. However, unlike past rallies, the recent upsurge of Bitcoin was primarily led by spot volumes, okay? Binance and Coinbase saw record high daily volumes, okay? According to CZ, look at this. He tweeted this yesterday. You can see here, 12 billion. Actually, he tweeted this earlier today different times around the world, but the demand for Bitcoin and Coinbase reached a point where the exchange could no longer handle user activity for a temporary period. Um, and the relatively low volume on Bitcoin futures exchanges um, indicate that the upsurge from $7,700 to $9,500 in basically one single 24 hour period was completely organic. So again, I think that's probably the most bullish I mean, it is. It is by far. We talked about this yesterday before it happened. It is literally the most bullish scenario that could have came out of it. And the fact that it was um, traded this way, seemingly, again, is just more credence to it being extremely bullish here. So historical BTC levels were broken with ease. Remember, we talked about 8,000 being extremely hard, guys. We just shot through it. Now, again, with so much exuberance, I definitely think that it would make more sense that we come down over the next week. Um, but really, I mean, it's really up for grabs at this point. It's a game of probabilities. And it's more probable that we come down. However, it was less probable yesterday that we would get to 9,500, but we did. So absolutely nuts. When I say Bitcoin can do whatever it wants, I mean, that's like the perfect example yesterday. Uh, we had the 100-day, 200-day, and the 618 Fibonacci completely all broken yesterday. Okay, huge. And now what's crazy here is this institutional demand acted as a safety net. We're finally seeing this. We were talking about this back in late 2018 where a lot of people were saying, if Bitcoin is actually going to, to moon, we need institutional interest. And guys, institutional interest has only increased over the past two years. It's been absolutely perfect. 88% of inflows this quarter came from institutional investors, the overwhelming majority of which were hedge funds. Okay, according to this here, Grayscale, the gradual increase of inflow in capital into institutional products of Grayscale since just a few months ago, the beginning of 2020, indicates institutions consistently invested in Bitcoin throughout this first quarter. And now we're a month into the second quarter here. Very interesting to see a significant increase in organic retail demand resulting in surging spot volume. 
the breach of key resistance levels and the accumulation uh, of institutions created the perfect storm to push Bitcoin above 9,000. So is this the the end of the having pump? Okay, we have about a little less than two weeks away. Is this the end of it? Or do you think we could rally into it? And guys, there's no doubt in my mind that if we fast forward a few months down the road, we are not going to be trading below 10,000. I think, I think this year, that's definitely the trajectory I think Bitcoin is headed. And guys, 2021, everybody expects 2021 to be insane. And this thing's kind of like a freight train, guys. Once it starts, maybe it, maybe it won't stop. Wow. So very awesome. So anybody interested in trading on here, definitely make sure to check out the link pinned to the comments there, guys. Again, word of warning, I would not recommend leverage trading at all. Wow.